Welcome to this overview of IRPS Career Services. Uh, my name is David Robertson and I'm the Director of Career Services and uh, congratulations on your admission to IRPS. Uh, I work with most of the students interested in the private sector and with employers in the private sector. Uh, we are all generalists though, uh, so we can work with anyone, but uh, I primarily can focus on the private sector. And I'd like to introduce my uh, colleagues who are here with me. They are. Hi everyone, my name is Tamara Golden and I cover the U.S. public sector and policy research related to think tanks. And I'm Nareet Mandel and I primarily work with students interested in nonprofit sector and multilaterals. Welcome. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking a little bit about the philosophy of our, our services that we provide. Um, this is a professional development, this is a professional school uh, and you're here to get a good education but also to get a job after you graduate, right? So uh, we take our uh, services very seriously here in terms of making sure you get good professional development as well. Um, we do strive to bring you the best of what we say is high touch and high tech, meaning that uh, a lot of what we provide is, is online. We have a, a, a system called IRPS Careers where you will uh, apply for jobs and post your resume and sign up for appointments and events and things like that that you can do 24 hours a day online. But also we pride ourselves on having an open door policy that you can come and see any one of us at any time and if we're available, we'll meet with you right then. We all three have offices that are right next to each other. Uh, and it's a very casual and formal atmosphere, and we love meeting with you. Uh, now, um, in terms of what the IRPS career looks like, there is no one, you know, one path. Uh, our students go off into a million different directions, working in lots of different sectors. Uh, and people change jobs a lot over their careers. So, we prepare you for what we call career self-reliance. Uh, we're going to teach you the skills that are important in getting a job, the networking, the informational interviewing, your resume, cover letter, all those kinds of things uh, are important skills uh, to gain because it's not just, you know, just right here while you're graduate school, but for a lifetime. Um, we do talk about the IRPS toolkit as being unique. Uh, it's a very interdisciplinary uh, program and in which you will be taking classes in, in you know, policy and politics and in business uh, and you know, quantitative courses and of course regional language courses. All of the things combined together is that IRPS toolkit that is extremely valuable in terms of your career development. Um, and lastly, I just want to mention uh, that we, we like to talk in, in terms of admitting alumni because uh, for us there's not much difference. We work with students, we work with alumni, and we offer lifetime uh, career services. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tamara Golden who's going to talk about uh, our CDP program. Hello everyone again. So career development program. Each year during orientation we require the entire incoming class to participate in two days worth of workshops that can provide that uh, comprise our career development program or what we affectionately call CDP. We recognize that IRPS students come to the program from a variety of very different company cultures, career paths, and even societal norms. And the career development program is really meant to lay the groundwork for the career development that you're going to be doing over the two years here and the work that you will be doing in, in partnering with our staff. And in doing so, it promotes career self-reliance that David mentioned a minute ago by equipping you to forge your own career path and teaching you the skills that you'll need uh, to be successful again and again over the span of a lifetime as you change jobs and possibly even career fields. It also improves the quality of the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that we conduct with you because if everyone has an introduction to the same materials and resources, that allows us individually to go much deeper in our coaching with students to address their specific needs. So to give you an example of this past year's CDP sessions, they included workshops on networking, resume writing, cover letter writing, networking, effective use of LinkedIn, power interviewing, and even some others. So if CDP is our core curriculum, if you will, uh, we have a lot of other offerings on top of that, electives, if you will. And let's start with IRPS Careers. David mentioned it before. It's our online uh, software platform that we utilize for posting jobs and career-related events. 
We also use it for targeted uh, communications with students regarding positions or events that match their particular interests. And for the next bullet item, internship and professional development funding, each quarter we have a limited amount of money available to help offset the cost of attending conferences. And each summer we help subsidize students who do unpaid internships. The next three bullets on this slide touch on the exposure that you will have while here at IRPS to different companies and organizations of interest. So each year we bring several employers to campus to recruit and participate in job fairs. And some of these latter are in collaboration with other schools in the area. We also have annual trips to San Francisco, Washington DC, and Los Angeles, and even do site visits here in San Diego to visit organization headquarters and offices. We also regularly have alumni on campus to offer career talks throughout the year, and particularly during focused events in January and April that we refer to as winter and spring connections. Finally, there are additional resources to aid in your job search. These include a complete set of industry-specific resources that are available on our website, sector or topic-specific workshops offered throughout the year, either by one of our staff or an outside practitioner, and one-on-one -on -one coaching with the three members of our career services team, David, Nareet, or myself. And with that, I'll hand it over to Nareet. Okay, hi everyone again, it's Nareet. I um, want to talk a little bit about summer internships. So every year about 90% of our students conduct a summer internship between their first and second year in the program. And we are extremely fortunate uh, to be able to help them in that process, not just through helping them find their internships to begin with, but also help them financially. Um, we have a set of uh, IRPS supporters that uh, donate funds be to help students who have unpaid internships so that they can go abroad uh, and do things that they normally wouldn't be able to afford to do. So here's an example of Connie, who uh, was uh, doing an internship in Peru with Innovations for Poverty Action. And she specifically was working on field research to help identify quantifiable results of development projects. So here I also wanted to show you a little bit of a breakdown of like where some other organizations there's students do internships with. Uh, so this is for the class that's about to graduate, the class of 2013. And there's some internships from last summer. So we broke it down by sector. Um, so you can see, you know, organizations like Merrill Lynch, Qualcomm, and then of course a lot of within the public sector, a lot of government organizations as well, uh, Treasury, State Department, and within the nonprofits, um, you know, it, I call it nonprofit slash multilateral uh, because we also have a lot of people who are interested in that area. So we've got people who work with the United Nations in New York. We have people uh, at the World Bank in DC and in Beijing as well. Uh, UN World Food Program. Uh, anyway, you can see the list here by yourself. But I think what's nice about this is, of course, this will change from year to year. But one thing that will not change from year to year is that we've made an impression over time with employers. And every year, uh, I have employers that will contact us and say, hey, we would like an intern again this summer. Last, year, some, last year's intern was so fantastic. So a lot of times, um, that is great for you guys coming in because a lot of the footwork has already been paved for you. So also in terms of, um, you know, where do they go and, and kind of what, how does it break down by sector? So you'll see, of course, year by year, that's going to be different based on the interests of the students uh, in the program. But for this graduating class 2013, um, you'll see that about 30% uh, were in the private sector, 30 public, 30 um, uh, nonprofit, and about seven in multilateral. So roughly, <laughs> you'll see it right there. Um, also in terms of region, um, Again, it's basically all over the world. Um, you will see another area um, on the region, and in case you're wondering what that stands for, it's generally Europe and Africa, but it could be India, it could be anywhere basically you're interested in, Middle East. Um, and that is, I think, just testament to how wonderful the program is in terms of it doesn't just prepare you um, just for necessarily careers in China, Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia, Latin America, but a lot of what you learn is transferable to these other regions as well. And every year we have students who uh, stay, like to stay here in San Diego and West Coast, and a lot of people will also go to the East Coast um, to do, of, of course, a lot of government uh, internships. And I'm now going to go ahead and turn it over back to David. Great, thanks, Nareet. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, employment, uh, jobs after graduation. And so you see some information up there about uh, where people from the class of 2012 who graduated in June, this past June, uh, and where uh, some of them are working. Now, we're still collecting data for class of June 2012, and so this is just partial information here. 
uh, but it gives you, I think, a good idea of uh, the types of companies anyway. In a few minutes, uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, the types of jobs, but for now, you get a sense of uh, the, the organizations, uh, both in the private, public, and, and nonprofit sectors. In terms of uh, more complete data, so we have complete data for the, uh, the class of 2011. And you can see there uh, the percentages in terms of the sectors that they are uh, working in right after graduation. And, uh, and you can see a big chunk there, 55% in the private sector. And uh, typically that's more like 45% uh, are historically for IRPS graduates, it's been about 45% private sector and 55% um, and uh, public and nonprofit. Uh, and we had a slightly larger amount of people that went on for further study. Normally, that's about 5%, uh, but uh, we started a new uh, study exchange program, not exchange program, but a, a second master's in China that students could take advantage of, a fully paid program, which was quite, uh, quite attractive, so quite a few students uh, took advantage of that. But uh, again, this is a little uh, a bit of an anomaly, I'd say, in terms of the, uh, the large uh, percentage in the private sector. And a lot of that just had to do with the slowdown in uh, public sector hiring the last couple of years. The class of 2012 data will probably look similar. And here you can see the class of 2011 employment by, by industry. And you, know, you can see that's quite diverse and lots of different uh, different areas that people are, are working in and uh, probably you know you see a large chunk there 19% uh, the technology industry uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're on the west coast here and, and so a lot of technology firms especially up in the uh, San Francisco uh, Bay Area um, quite a few people obviously in, in consulting and and um, and then of course in you know all these other areas that people who have this degree you know, typical probably of most of most programs uh, go into. I don't know what we would do without our alumni. I, you know, I don't have lots of points of comparison, but I, every day, and the three of us talk about this all the time, we are amazed by um, the alumni that we have and how much they give back. We, we receive phone calls and emails every day, uh, all of this from alumni who, you know, are offering to help, either it's sending a, you know, a, a job description, uh, an internship announcement, uh, offering to, to come and interview and things like that. So, um, you know, really need to impress upon you the importance of the, the alumni connections in the IRPS community. Um, you know, our school is about 25 years old, so we have about 2,300 alumni around the world. Um, our biggest clusters of alumni are in Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and Southern California. Uh, but we do have, uh, you know, a large presence, obviously, in in Beijing, in Shanghai, in Tokyo, in Seoul, and in Mexico City, and places like that. So, and in New York. Uh, but those three are the are the largest uh, clusters. Uh, we have a very active alumni LinkedIn group. Uh, I think the last time I looked, I think we had 15, 1,600 uh, alumni on LinkedIn in in our particular IRPS group. And uh, that is used constantly by ourselves and by our students and alumni to connect with each other, to do research, to identify alumni uh, for students, to do informational interviewing and things like that. Um, of course, our alumni do lots of advising, meaning that they uh, either over the phone or in person uh, or via Skype or via email are being connected to our students and providing some some advising. Sometimes that advising is more formal in the in the form of uh, a mentor program that we have where we can match students with alumni. Uh, or sometimes it's with our alumni in residence program we have where we bring in an alum for a month and on uh, one day of the week they'll take appointments with students um, to give them advice, to new mock interviewing, to you know help them with networking and things like that, and then other times it's, it's just more informal. It's just one-offs where you're writing to or calling an, an alum for a specific question. Uh, we also bring alumni back uh, to do career talks. Uh, they'll come in and do a you know 60-minute session question and answers, talking about their career area, their path, uh, talk about what they're currently doing, their current company. 
and they will put sometimes be collecting resumes and, and doing hiring. We're proud of our quarterly connections events. Uh, we have a fall, winter, and spring connections. Our fall connections is about connecting first-year students with second-year students where they talk about their summer internships. But our winter and spring connections events are all about bringing alumni back to campus uh, from all over the country and sometimes uh, the globe uh, where they come back and they'll give a panels. Uh, it's a whole day of panels and, and uh, workshops and, and interviewing and a big networking event and dinner and things like that. So really great events for helping students to connect with alumni. Uh, we have our Spring Connections event coming up uh, April 11th and 12th and this year we're focusing Spring Connections specifically on alumni who are hiring. So all the alumni coming back for that event uh, will be doing resume collections and interviewing. Uh, and then uh, Tamara earlier talked about under our resources, our outreach trips that we do to San Francisco and to Washington, D.C. Uh, we were just in San Francisco last week with 40 students, and uh, next month during spring break we'll be in Washington, D.C. We couldn't do those uh, trips without uh, the connections our alumni have at their organization. So we will do visits to employers where the alumni will sometimes uh, speak with the students or put together panels of alumni to speak with the students and also connect us with uh, HR recruiters uh, to give presentations, sometimes tours, but those would not happen without those alumni connections. And lastly, summer celebrations, which might be the the thing uh, that you attend uh, most uh, uh, the soonest because in the summer we hold celebrations all over the world. I think this last summer we had 14 different summer celebrations in cities around the world where we bring together students, current students who are interning in those cities uh, and they will uh, get together in a you know, usually dinner or reception kind of a thing with prospective and admitted students in those cities along with alumni in those areas. So really great, pretty informal, casual uh, events uh, to introduce you to the IRPS community before you even start. So uh, as we start to uh, wind down here a little bit in our presentation, uh, each of us is going to spend a little bit of time talking about our specific uh, sectors that we work with. Earlier I mentioned that we, we are uh, you know, sector specific in terms of our advising and outreach to employers, uh, but I also again want to tell you that we are all generalists. Uh, we will meet with anyone and often do. Sometimes students just you know, connect more with one of us than the other, so it, it doesn't have to be that way. But for us, in terms of our organizing our outreach, it makes a lot of sense to divide that up by sector. So again, I work with the private sector, and there's an example of an alum for you. You know, fairly typical type of a, a job for a private sector, somebody working in government affairs for a private sector company. For those of you who aren't familiar with Qualcomm, it's a Fortune 500 company based here in, in San Diego, a technology company. And uh, we have a lot of alumni that work in all kinds of areas of Qualcomm. But uh, Erika, who graduated in 2006, she works in their wire wireless reach initiative. It's really Qualcomm's CSR arm, uh, and it comes under government affairs. But she's got a great job, uh, lots of travel, and um, it's, a, it's an area that a lot of students uh, want to work. And we've had a lot of students uh, work there uh, and uh, intern there as well. So in the private sector, in terms of targeted programming, there are a number of things that we do throughout the year. A lot going on in the fall in particular. We, we uh, work with students to get them to attend conferences in the fall where there's lots of employers that are doing active recruiting. That's at the Net Impact Conference, Nshimba, uh, National Black MBA, uh, the Asian American MBA programs, uh, the Boston Career Forum for Japanese uh, bilingual students. So we really you know, impress upon the students the importance of going to those in the fall. We also offer uh, case interviewing prep workshops. We have lots of employer visits coming and doing recruiting. We have a Hire San Diego career fair that we do in conjunction with other uh, uh, business graduate programs in the San Diego area, which we just actually held last week. We also have student clubs on campus uh, you know, that are focused on the private sector. Export Access is a, a club that focuses on doing uh, market research consulting. So they will work with uh, real companies out there who pay them to do this research for them. Um, so that's just a little bit about uh, what we do in the, in the private sector. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Tamara, who's going to talk about the public sector. 
Okay, well, here's an example of one of our alums in the public sector, Bill Lindquist, who graduated in 06 from the MPIA program. And Bill is an international economist at the Treasury Department. And Bill's a, a great story because he came out of IRPS with uh, having been focused on the, uh, Latin America, but he actually got hired into Treasury by another alum to work on European issues, and he felt well qualified to do so because of that interdisciplinary approach of the degree. And um, But he was able to circle back and eventually get back to his Latin America roots. He currently is um, advising senior Treasury officials on economic developments in Latin America as the Treasury attache in Brazil, a position that he's going to hold for three years. And just prior to that, he managed to cycle in for two years to serve at the IMF. So he was seconded to the IMF while still an employee of the Treasury Department. So he is a rising star at Treasury, and they come back every year year to recruit students for summer internships at the Treasury Department. So we have a very, very strong recruiting relationship with them. And some of the targeted programming, you know, I mentioned that our CDP is our core curriculum. And on top of that core curriculum, we have a lot of electives, a lot of other workshops and programs that you can get involved in. Well, if you're interested in public sector, government, these are some of the examples of workshops that you might take a look at during the course of the year. Uh, there's one uh, that I do very early on on government internships because those deadlines come up very soon in the, in the fall. We also have somebody come in to talk about the security clearance process, what that paperwork looks like, answer people's questions, reservations, concerns. I do a workshop on the federal job search process and application process and demystifying that. We also have the CIA come regularly to campus. There are also regular recruiters here, and they do a fantastic simulation each year with our students. And the student club pass a policy analysis through strategic simulations actually is a club that, that is a spinoff of those CIA simulations, and they've taken it one step further and do simulations here throughout the year with students not only here at IRPS but also at neighboring schools. Um, we also have State Department coming regularly to do overviews. We do a panel with foreign service officers, so we have our, a lot of students interested in applying to the foreign service every year. And we also prep our second year students to apply to the Presidential Management Fellowship, which is something that you would apply to as you are preparing to graduate from the program. And of course, we visit a lot of government agencies during the annual DC outreach trip, which we do each year during spring break in March. So I'll turn it over to Nari to talk a little bit about her sectors. Thanks, Tamara. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about nonprofit and multilateral careers. Um, the nonprofit sector spans a great deal of industries. Um, one very hot trend, however, in this industry is related to the question of whether or not programs are effective, and if yes, how much of an impact they really have. So a great example of an alumna who's using her quantitative training from IRPS is Ashley LeBlanc. She, uh, she works um, on answering exactly these kinds of questions um, as a monitoring and evaluation manager for Women for Women International in Washington, D.C. She also graduated in 2006. Um, and so she's, she's a good example of an alumna who has come back um, year after year uh, to either alumni connections or just given career talks or mentored students uh, who are interested in working uh, in international development, monitoring evaluation. Um, she was just out here for one of our um, events with the development club that I co-sponsored, or career services co-sponsors with the development club, which is International Development Night, which brings together practitioners from the field of international development to give career advice, potentially uh, internship and job opportunities as well. And it's a really nice uh, example also of um, how career services uh, partners with student groups to, um, to bring them exactly the kind of events that they're interested in. Um, so with that, let me transition to the targeted programming and some of the resources that uh, are available to you here. So I already mentioned Development Night. Um, we also have a membership uh, to DevEx, which is an online portal for all things international development, uh, including multilateral hiring. It has a lot of really good resources. And uh, being a part of IRPS gives you access to a career account with them, which gives you access to basically the full website, um, which is not usually available to just anyone. Um, as I mentioned before, we also do quarterly employer visits. Uh, we've done outreach visits here in San Diego to PCI, which is Project Concern International, which is a local organization. We've uh, gone to local foundations, such as the San Diego Foundations. And then, of course, when we go up to San Francisco every year, uh, we go to organizations like the Asia Foundation um, or um, 
Kiva, organizations that basically are of interest to our students. So, and of course, we also have employers who come to campus and do recruiting and, um, you know, both for internships and full-time opportunities. Now, a lot of organizations, especially with the multilaterals, are overseas. And so one way I kind of bridge the gap on that is I do Skype sessions. So last fall, I did a session um, with an alum who works for the WTO in Geneva. And we just Skyped him in and he could see the students, the students could see him. And it was basically like he was in the room, but he was all the way in Switzerland. And that worked out really well in terms of building a relationship um, for some of those students with him who are, you know, who are interested in that field. Finally, I wanted to mention just a couple more student organizations and programs that you, you might be getting involved with. So, for example, there is the Net Impact Board Fellows Program, which basically allows you as a student to work to get a, a feel of what it's like to work in a nonprofit organization, but from the top down, uh, by being a non-voting member on a board, uh, to see kind of how they make their decisions, uh, help them by doing a project for them, which of course is, is great just to get the experience, but it's also really great in terms of making connections. And every year, um, Strategic Community Consulting, which is a nonprofit focused uh, consulting group, uh, student group here, um, they they do of course, consulting to nonprofits locally and basically all over the United States. Um, but they also put on certain events. So, for example, every year they have a grant writing workshop that they coordinate uh, that teaches basic grant writing skills, which, of course, in the nonprofit field is very important to know. And that basically sums up um, that sums up our, our presentation at this point. Um, I just want to reiterate, um, David, Tamar, and I love our jobs. We love working with our students, and we truly hope that you will join us in the fall and look forward to working with you.